This is the Wii Viewer. And the Little Wii Viewer. And we're going to review... Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. When I heard about the rabbits coming to a Mario game, I'm like, oh my goodness. Well, luckily this game, they definitely toned it down. And they kind of just reduced them to just annoying characters, but more of just kind of... Things that exist. Oh, they're still annoying. They're less, though. The only Rabbits game I played was that Bargain Bin, and it seemed about the same. They were much more annoying in the Bargain Bin. People were trying to say that we just played that game wrong, and it's actually pretty good. Uh, no. It wasn't that it was a bad game. I think graphically that Bargain Bin looked really good. It was a very polished game. It's just that the mini games were bad. Even if you were a way to make those games fun, they were just boring. And okay. that's a review of TV Party. Now, let's focus on Mario plus rabbits. It feels and looks like the polish of a Nintendo game. It feels and looks like the polish of a Nintendo game with the glitches of a Ubisoft game. Yeah, Ubisoft. How come you can't do this on any your other games? I better see an amazing Just Dances here. And yeah, I'm probably going to review that one again. I say glitches, but it's more of like the usual jankiness that they usually have with cutting back to different people. It's the cutscene fair that you normally find. The glitches were so minor, it's not even worth talking about. Yeah, although sometimes you see people sliding around. It's welcome to Ubisoft. So what's the story about? Mario and Rabbids came to the same kingdom. And like things got sucked up. People disappeared. Oh yeah, and stuff's getting merged together. But that's really the gist of it. So somebody was playing with the PlayStation VR. And just like we expected, it turned evil and started creating things into other things. And then merged in other worlds together. And that's how this whole thing happened. Which is why we're never buying a PlayStation VR. What do you want? the story it's just the setup to play the game are the rabbits coming to the mario universe or are the mario going to the rabbit universe i believe it's a mix of both because they both get sucked into another universe and i think they go to this weird mixed universe so this is a tactics game yes a turn-based strategy game which i personally hate you're also bad at them that's why i hate them whose fault is that exactly but i enjoyed this i couldn't believe it i was enjoying playing a tactics game but that being said this game is not easy I died a lot on one of these levels. Just because it's not easy doesn't make it hard. Well, it was easy for you. because I wouldn't say it was easy for me either. I would say it, it provided a challenge, but it wasn't like excruciatingly difficult. For example, in World 2-2, I died five times. And then I died three times on 2-4, which was just the reverse of 2-2. I got through both stages Yeah, instantly. on the first try. Yeah, I know. I was like, oh, you're going to have a real problem when it comes to 2-2. He's just like breezing through it. Wow, but, it's like I'm using characters that are garbage. I don't want to use Luigi. Uh, you don't want to use good characters? He's barely got any HP. That's the fun of it. He's got barely any HP, which means it's all allocated into damage. So let's talk about the characters themselves. What did you think? Oh, that's a segue. Are we just going to go through all of them? Go ahead. There's not that many. Initially start the game with Mario, Rabbit Peach, and Rabbit Luigi. Mario's an all-around fighter that does about just about everything, and he can jump on enemies. Rabbit Peach is a tank and also can heal. Rabbit Luigi has Vampire and low damage, but it's, it's very useful on your team. Uh, next up on the actually good characters is Luigi, who does a ton of damage, can go anywhere. I swear, this guy has like the movement range of the entire map, and he can also double jump. It's insane. He goes wherever he wants, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. Then you unlocked Rabbit Mario, which was my second favorite character. Well, let's not, let's kind of stop there. Because That's in World 2. Okay. And then, like, the final character, for this at least, would be Rabbit Mario, which is a one-man wrecking crew who blows up everyone in his path, including his own team, which is such a cool idea for a character because he just destroys everything in his path. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. Now, there are more characters. We just don't want to get into it because we have kind of a rule where we don't try to go past that's 40 percent yeah there's like four worlds so half the game is kind of what you're seeing so basically you're going to be seeing the forest level and the desert ice level it's not because we haven't gotten further it's we don't want to spoil anything so let's talk about the actual gameplay itself let's talk about the way that you play this game have you ever played xcom no do you want to play xcom not a little i don't blame you i don't want to play xcom either that game goes really in depth on like uh unit management and like if someone dies it's oh it's messy uh we're talking about xcom mario edition where permadeath isn't a thing so you don't really have to worry about that and you just kind of play like an xcom game simplified for the nintendo switch and runs beautifully well everything just works it's just simplified XCOM. You can now team jump, where you're able to jump onto other people and then go to different places, which means the movement which, in this game is huge. We should probably talk about the fact that Mario has a gun. What do you think of it? Pretty good with it. Should take it to a regular game. Hey, Bowser. Boom! 
boom! Uh, sadly, those aren't bullets he's shooting. What are they? They're like balls of plasma. They're like Nerf bullets that explode. I can just see that marketing meeting. <laughs> okay, it's like Nerf, but with death. You mean bullets? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's soft, but it will kill you. That does explain it, to be honest. So you moved around the map, getting behind cover or half cover. Sometimes it only protects you maybe 50% of the time, which I thought was kind of cool. It's like a random chance. Yeah, although Mario's, for me at least, seemed to fail every single 50-50 possible. Like, I swear, they would hit every 50-50, and I would miss every 50-50. But that's just kind of a thing with tactics games. You notice that in literally every game ever. So I'm going to give them a pass on that. Now, outside of battles, they want you to go look around. You have a free roam of pretty much the area that you have around you. And yeah. you have to solve little puzzles. Yeah, but it, in reality, it just kind of felt like a system in place to get you the next battle. It was just kind of hurrying you along. That's kind of a problem with just RPGs in general. This one just kind of felt more apparent because what was offered to you in between each stages was like little fun puzzles that you'd find in most RPGs. It's just little puzzles, like block pushing puzzles. It gets repetitive, but never boring. But I was never that excited to, to do any of their little puzzles. They weren't hard at all. It was hard to fail any of them. I don't think you could fail them. You can tailor the characters to the way you play the game. So if you're more of a shoot them all you can actually make it a little bit easier on yourself by giving yourself more damage points. Yeah, but the problem with that is that the skill tree kind of boiled down to two exact play styles. Up the dash for characters like Rabbit Mario and Rabbit Luigi, where that dash is the whole reason why you picked them in the first place, or their abilities. So, for example, Rabbit Peach. Why would you be upping her dash when you could just be upping her heal instead? There's no point to put points into the damage tree because it's only for when you're on higher ground does it even come into it. Effect. Those opportunities are surprisingly slim. And then there's also weapons you can buy. You can choose to tailor them to the way you play. Like you can either do honey or knockback. And usually for most characters it's two with a third one every once in a while. Like for Rabbit Luigi for example it's like vampire and like maybe fire. Plus there's um, also a secondary weapon. And they typically do more damage unless they don't. But they also take longer to cool off. Right. You can't just keep using them. But they typically have much higher utility than the standard blasters. There are also mini bosses and boss fights. What do you think of those? The mini bosses range from pretty cool to just, oh, it's over. The first one was extremely difficult because you didn't really have anything to hide. You went anywhere on the map, there was no way to stop it. So what do you think of the bosses? The bosses were clever, especially the third world's boss. Which we're not talking about. Which we're not talking about, but if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, I like Rabbit Kong one. The Rabbit Kong one was pretty cute. But the only thing I didn't like was the Princess Peach rabbit taking selfies while that poor creature dies. I was like, can I just push her off the edge? <laughs> Oh, take a picture, take her with you. The bosses in this game, they were not consistent when it comes to like, not only difficulty level, but also just how creative they were. The first world's boss, it's pretty cool. The second world's boss, it's over in an instant. The third world's boss, it's pretty cool. You get the idea. Now there's some optional stuff you can get to extend this gameplay. Find museum pieces. I then... wouldn't underplay that. That's a huge part of it. Every world when you beat it gains uh, challenges and stuff for like each mission and there's a hidden mission in each world and there's the ultimate challenge once you beat the game. There's a lot of stuff. Plus after you beat a world they give you an ability that you go back and use in the mid sections between enemy fights. There is definitely a lot of stuff and a lot of backtracking that you can do in this game. Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, little reviewer. Would you buy Red Sail or Skip? I would buy this game. This is a great game. It has a lot of replayability. It's also pretty funny. And it's just fun. Yeah, actually, I agree with you. I think it's worth a buy, too. I want to stress that if you are on the fence about this game, ignore the fact that it's a Rabbit's game. That's going to take a while for a lot of people to be like, what are you talking about? They're toned down to the point where they're almost like their annoyingness is a non-factor. They're more like seen as almost like Goompas, where they're just kind of enemies that you fight. There's no other way to put it other than it's good. If you're on the fence about it, you just need to like take the risk. You will enjoy this game. So we both say bye. Yeah, great game.